are you all? I hope you're doing well. Thank you for watching. We are going to be going to Chicago and looking at the migrant crisis in Chicago and just how the, the newly elected progressive mayor, Brandon Johnson, is handling things because I don't think it's very good. And look, to, to the defense of some of these mayors, now I don't agree with almost anything that they say. I agree with, with almost none of their policies uh, exhibit A, this migrant crisis, calling yourself a sanctuary city and then not being able to deal with the amount of people that come because you called yourself a sanctuary city. I don't respect that. But I will say, I don't think anyone in their right mind was prepared for the floodgates to be open just as they were. So I have this like little tiny speck, this little, little baby speck little baby crumb of, <laughs> I have a little baby crumb of sympathy for the likes of Mayor Brandon Johnson of Chicago, for Mike Johnston of Denver, for Eric Adams of New York City, but where I don't have the respect is while no one could have foreseen the amount of people, well, We'll just be nice. No one, no one could have foreseen the amount of people coming through. But where I do not have respect is what you will notice, and specifically Brandon Johnson, who we're going to look at tonight, but also with Eric Adams, also with Mike Johnston. They will not call on Joe Biden to close the border. It's almost like they're allergic to saying that. They can't do it. They'll turn bright red. They might need Benadryl. Benadryl and possibly a nappy. I don't know, but they can't do it. They're allergic. The only thing that they will do is they will say, we need federal assistance. We need more funding. More funding isn't going to stop the problem. It's just going to attract more people to come. Expediting worth authorizations isn't going to solve the problem. It's going to put a band-aid on it for a few people, but it's only going to incentivize to come. Because they're not coming because climate. They're not coming because they're escaping persecution. How do I know this? Just ask them. They'll tell you. They're coming to work. They're coming because our policies are so lax. They can just walk over the border and be shipped to any major city that they want to go into in the U.S. And then the mayors of these cities will fight for them to get expedited citizenship and work authorization. So no, they're not going to stop coming. Anyway, let's look at Mayor Johnson because there are actually some rumors. And if true, I'm very concerned, but I'm also not surprised. So this is Brandon Johnson in an interview uh, just about a week ago when, when being asked, are you going to raise taxes? Because as you know, the migrant it's very expensive, all the migrants coming and the federal government is not reimbursing them. So this is coming from local taxpayer money to pay for these issues. This is how he handled that. To help pay for the migrant crisis. Here's what I've said repeatedly. This is an international crisis. And we've that heard requires, you say that. Okay, so, so then, 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 then you know the answer then. Well, the no, federal because government, the answer, the, the answer are you adding is, a tax? The, the answer is the federal government has to do its job. And what if we don't? Well, look, there are 30,000 Ukrainians in this city right now who sought asylum, who were refugees. What's the difference between that crisis and the crisis that we're experiencing now? So this is not an unprecedented demand. There were services that were attached to individuals who were seeking asylum, from the UK. By the way, I don't know if I played it in that clip. It was in the longer clip. I might have cut it off. But he goes on to say he's proud of himself because he got, with, he got rid of tip wages. So he's proud of himself for getting rid of those tip wages. And uh, what do we know about tip wages? Whenever a, a politician says they want to do away with tip wages, what is that really? It's actually just a way for the government to get more tax revenue because when you declare when you're getting paid on top of getting tipped people tip less and so yes you might have a bigger paycheck but you're act actually taking home way less money and again that's another way for the government to get some more of that tax revenue because technically um, they would have no idea if you declared all your tips or not. So that's that's a sneaky little way. They say they're doing it for the man, but they're really doing it for 
the man, if that makes sense. All right, so before we go into what's actually going on or what's rumored to be going on with Brandon Johnson behind the scenes and this issue, let's just take a kind of a look at what's happening. So essentially what's happening is the city of Chicago is completely running out of money. They have no idea how they're going to continue to fund this issue. That's why she's asking about raising taxes. And it's so bad, they actually can't even build any more shelters, but they're still getting people every single day. And it's in the middle of winter. So now the shelters are becoming overcrowded and they're running out of places to put people. Groups hand out food outside. Executive Director Jamie Gratz-Cyril says they tell her it's so crowded, illnesses are spreading easily. That there's not enough space for people to quarantine. Um, the second is the medical intake. It's just, it's taking too long for people to get seen and then followed up with. Overcrowded shelters was expected. The city decompressed the police stations and during this cold weather, new arrivals have been moved out of warming buses at the landing zone. And because the money is drying up, Mayor Brandon Johnson put a hold on opening new city shelters and paused the 60-day shelter eviction policy until February 1st. And this next clip that I'm going to show you is extra special uh, because like we've seen in other sanctuary jurisdictions across the United States, uh, this official with the city of Naperville, so I'm guessing this is on the outskirts of Chicago, is actually suggesting that uh, people with larger homes maybe take in a migrant family because you get a migrant and you get a migrant and you get a migrant. Everybody gets a migrant. Also, you will own nothing and be happy. Anywho, uh, this is the, a suggestion of a local official in the Chicago area to help alleviate some of this issue. And um, what I'd like to do is direct staff to create a sign-up sheet. So, you know, for individuals that would be willing to house migrant families. Um, and if there's people that would do that, God bless them. If you are going to declare yourself a sanctuary jurisdiction, if you are going to endorse open borders Biden, you would think you would have some kind of plan. And again, I have a little bit of sympathy because I don't think anyone knew it was going to be just this bad. But still, you would think you would have something, some sort of plan. There was absolutely no plan in place. So no wonder Brandon Johnson is, he looks as though he's stressed out. And apparently he is really stressed out. So I'm going to play you just a minute or two from a local Chicago podcast. And the journalist that they're talking to is Anita P Padilla. And she's a very trusted local journalist. She now lives in Florida and does things there. But she talks about, she worked with a local Fox channel. And she talks about from, from sources that she has. And if you listen to this conversation, it also sounds like the other side of the conversation might have heard the same rumor. Now, keep in mind, it's just a rumor, but it almost makes sense if you just look at how the city of Chicago is doing, how Brandon Johnson is handling all of this. There just doesn't seem to be a plan, a solution, an answer, and just throwing money at it isn't going to solve the root of the problem. But just listen to this podcast and then we'll talk. As we sit here and tape this, it's getting cold and snowing in Chicago, and Brandon Johnson has got his hands full to deal with that. Uh, but you've seen it. You have seen people in your community no, starting no to amount of No amount of antidepressants can cure him of no, this problem. No, no. He you certainly know? is feeling the malaise. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's so true. And, you know, I, I, actually, you, you brought it up. I was going to bring it up, and I thought, the panic oh, attacks. The mayor's panic attacks? Oh, can yes, we talk yes. about that? Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. we talk about that? Because sources told me, two sources told me that he has been in the hospital for these panic attacks, and he is stressed out Oof. because uh, this is a big, big job for yeah. him. Um, he wasn't I've ready he's for been, it. He's not ready for it. For, he is not ready right. for it. He is not He's not a leader. I'm sorry. He's just no, not a leader. Yeah, he's not. And, um, you know, a leader, you know, brings people up and supports them. And uh, the, the Chicago police are still waiting to see where that comes from. But yeah, he put in a good superintendent. But um, I still think that he needs to prove himself to the police. You know, where does he stand on that? But this immigration issue, boy, this is not helping him at all, this situation. Um, 
And, you know, when you call yourself a sanctuary city, you call yourself a sanctuary state. Guess what's going to happen? Don't blame Texas, because right. Texas, if you look at what they're dealing with, they have a massive influx. You, you see, yeah. we don't even show the videos on television. The amount of people that are just standing around, you know, and now they're, you know, they're desperate because what happens when people don't have money or they don't have food? They they start breaking they, into things. They start committing crimes. They start working for for the cartels. They start doing human trafficking. They start becoming victims of human trafficking. So they had to do. What are they going to do with all these people? They had to get them out of their city. And Hopefully he's okay. You have these people that are in office that are not leading. They have this huge issue that none of them planned for, none of them far foresaw happening. And what really bothers me is, again, they keep asking for money. That's not fixing the issue. And I really do think there was an opportunity for all of these mayors and governors to come together. But unfortunately, you have people in office who seem to just be mere puppets for whatever their political party, whatever that chosen narrative is, and they cannot cross the line. We can't call on them to close the border because we can't step over the line of our political party. We can't mess. We can't make our political party mad. And that's what I think it is. They could have all come together. Uh, uh, Brandon Johnson. Eric Adams, Mike Johnston, Greg Abbott, uh, other leaders all across the nation, they all could have come together, banded together and called on Joe Biden to close the border. But that's in fact not what they're doing. And not only that, they're bankrupting their cities, they're displacing their own citizens. And we haven't even discussed the horrible humanitarian issue. This is for the people coming over the border. Now, look, I don't respect anyone, even though our government is allowing them to do this. And the people that we need to be upset at the most are our government. Those are the people that we need to be looking at to change things. These people are coming because they can now, although I don't respect how they came at all, and I never will. Um, you do, a part of you feels a little bit bad that they have been sold a lie and they're living in these horrible conditions. It was Chicago where you had the five-year-old, unfortunately, that passed away due to really bad conditions in these shelters. Uh, in recently in New York City, you had a stabbing and 18 migrants were taken into custody. And what Anita said right there, you know, you have all these people in overcrowded shelters with horrible conditions. There's not sufficient bathrooms. There's not sufficient showers. Um, even in Chicago recently, they're having migrants stay in O'Hare. If you go through the area where they're staying, you get hit immediately by the smell. These are just not good conditions, not to mention you have people coming from South America or Africa and they're not used to the weather. And uh, Chicago isn't exactly the best weather in the whole country, but there was just no plan. And I really do think they, they might have actually been able to make a difference in this issue if all of these Democratic mayors would have banded together and did the right thing. Unfortunately, we just can't we can't tell we we can't go over the line of our party. We have to be loyal to our party. And there you have a lot of the issues with our political class today. They're loyal to the party and not the people who they're supposed to represent. Anyway, that is uh Brandon Johnson. Hopefully he's okay. And that is a rumor, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's true at all. And thank you very much. Have a good night.